Hello everyone, today we're going to continue looking at the Microsoft AD 204 question bank. Next up is question 66. For question 66, we're preparing to deploy an application based on Microsoft virtual machines. The virtual machines running this application need to meet the following requirements. First, when our VM is deployed, our firewall must be automatically configured before it accesses Microsoft Cloud resources. We must use a PowerShell script stored in Microsoft Storage to install the knowledge service. We need to meet these requirements. So here, if we need to meet these requirements, which feature should we use? That's what this question is asking. So of course, here, which one should we choose for configuring the firewall first? We need to use our run command. The run command feature allows you to execute script commands directly after the VM starts. It's suitable for automatically configuring firewall rules. The option below supports firewall and service scripts. Which one do we need to select? We need to choose the very last one. The custom script extension can download and execute PowerShell scripts from a storage account. It's suitable for installing dependent services. Alright, that's our question 66. Next is question 67. For question 67, the background is that a certain company is developing a Node.js application. The Web Application Code Repository is on GitHub. Before the application goes into production, it needs to go through a review, and the initial code needs to be deployed to a deployment slot with a specific name. You need to create the web application and deploy the code. Alright, so here we need to look at the answer. Here, we can see the overall steps involved. So what's the first thing we need to do? First, we need to create a new resource group. The second step is to define a new app service plan, which is the resource configuration. The third step is to create the web application. The font here is a bit small, so let me point it out for everyone. The first step is to create our resource group right here. The first step, and then the second step is to define the app service plan. We're doing that here. The third step is to create the main web application, which is our web app. The fourth step is to create a deployment slot named review. We're doing this in the AZ Web App slot right here. All right, this is our first question, number 67. Basically, it's just asking you to put things in order. Here, it's really just about arranging the overall creation steps in the correct sequence, because all four options are the same. Each of the four slots contains the same four options. So what they're really testing here is your ability to put them in the right order. All right, this is our question 67. Now. Let's move on to question 68. For question 68, we're accessing an application on a Microsoft Cloud VM, and its lifecycle must be associated with the VM instance. We need to enable managed identity for the VM. So which option do we need to choose here? Which parameter is required? First, we need to use our identity ID to specify the managed identity's ID. The second step is to use our system. To utilize the system assigned managed identity. This allows us to automatically bind it to our VM's lifecycle. So that's how we should answer this question. This is our question 68. Next, let's look at question 69. For question 69, first, we developed a SAS photo management system. The photos uploaded to Blob Storage need to be processed into a mobile-friendly version within one minute. Doesn't this look familiar? We've already come across this type of question more than once. There are a lot of multiple-choice questions like this, where the background is the same. But the solutions are different. So what's the solution for this question? First. The solution for this question is to use our Microsoft function in event-driven mode triggered by blob uploads. So in this case, our solution works like this. With this kind of pattern, it might have cold start delays. It can't guarantee to be triggered within one minute. 
Here, what you really need to pay attention to with this type of background question is the issue of timing. If your delay is relatively low, generally you can use something with higher latency like this. Yeah, cold start delays mean it can't guarantee to trigger within one minute. Yeah, that will result in an error. So this is our question number 69. The answer is B. Timing is quite important here. For this question, timing is the most crucial factor. It's the mobile-friendly version, right? The mobile version needs to trigger within one minute. That's the key point of this question. This is our question 69. We've come across a lot of questions like this, right? We've already seen many of them. So when you're memorizing, make sure not to mix them up. If you do mix them up, right? Or you could do it like this. So, after you've gone through the entire question bank, if you have a strong impression of this type of question, you can set them aside separately. For this type of question, we can filter them out separately. Actually, the filtering method is very simple, right? You can use keywords, for example, SS photo. That's the keyword for this question, right? It's unique. With this keyword, what can we do? Take this. All the content. Filter it out. After filtering it out, you just need to remember the correct answer. So who are we talking about here? If ain't great, this one absolutely guarantees low latency. As for the others, most of them can't guarantee low latency, which leads to mistakes. You can just remember the correct answer, and for any others you come across, just mark them as wrong. That's also a valid approach, because there are many types of questions like this and the correct ones are relatively fewer while the incorrect ones are more common. So just memorizing the correct answers will be more helpful for your memory. This is our 69th question. There are just too many questions with the same background like this. So here, we can share with everyone another relatively simple method. Let's bring it in and look at question 70. Question 70 is a true or false question. We need to deploy the API application into a slot name deployment and enable auto swap in the production slot. We also need to make sure that the pre-swap script is executed and the slot is ready before swapping. So what is the required solution? It's configuration. Website swap. And website swap. These two are basically one is. One is the path, the route, and the other is our sitters, which points to the status check method. These two are our solutions. Then, these two settings will enforce pre-swap warming and they use our HTTP request to verify whether the application is ready. So, this is basically using application settings to perform a health check before swapping. Therefore, these two solutions are correct. So, the answer is B. Even though it's a true or false question. As you all have seen with many questions, right? They deliberately reverse no and yes, just like that. They're setting traps for you. So after you determine whether something is correct or not, make sure to carefully check the options. It's not always that A is yes and B is no. They often switch them around. We've seen this in a lot of questions, right? So here, everyone really needs to pay attention. Don't fall into their traps. All right, this is our 70th question. If you need the complete question bank, leave a comment below to get the most reliable question bank at the best price. That's all for today. Bye-bye.